What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to look at a few application of integration problems for finding area and volume. So we're going to go through these two examples here. Here are some formulas to help us out, and let's get started. Okay, for question one, the first thing that we should do is get a rough sketch of what these graphs look like together. And we'll do them in separate colors. We have y equals e to the x. We'll sketch in green. So that looks like this, just going up. And we could sketch y equals e to the negative x in orange. So the relationship between y equals e to the x and y equals e to the negative x is they have symmetry over the y-axis. So what we're trying to find here, we're looking from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And that's going to highlight, here's x equals 0. And at x equals 2, we have this vertical line here. And that kind of captures the whole region that we're looking at. So we're looking at this space here inside this section here between the red, orange, and the green. So that's our region R. So if we want to find the area of region R, the cross sections involved for area are rectangles. So what we would look at is we would take a single vertical cross section here and expand it here so we could see it a little better and make it into a rectangle. And the dimensions here are going to be described by dx going in this direction because these are supposed to be infinitesimal. They're so, supposed to be super, super skinny. But the height, this is the hint that was given in the notes, we said to think of top minus bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the equation on top, which is y equals e to the x, and you're going to subtract it by the equation on bottom in orange, which is y equals e to the negative x. But just be mindful here that this only gives you one slice of area. So we call this dA because this is just a slice of area in region R. And the dimension, since it's a rectangle, we're going to get e to the x minus e to the negative x times dx. But if I want to find the area of the whole thing, I have to think about where does this region start and stop. And it starts at x equals 0 and stops at x equals 2. So the area of region R, we'll just write area of R here, is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. And we have the integrand e to the x minus e to the negative x dx. Now, since the theme in this video is how to set these up, we're going to use the calculator from here to find out the exact value. So to evaluate this integral, we're going to press math 9, and our lower limit was 0. Our upper limit is 2. And our integrand was e to the x. So we have second natural log giving us e to the x minus, oh, let's make sure we just get out of this exponent here. So we're going to hit the right arrow, then do minus, and we've got e to the negative x. And now we just write our dx at the end. And this will give us our answer to the first question. So taking what we found in the calculator here, we could say that our area to the nearest thousands place is going to be 5.524 square units. For question 1b, we're going to use the graph from before because we want to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving r about the x-axis. So if the x-axis is our axis of revolution, then our cross-section is going to go from the x-axis all the way to the green curve here, y equals e to the x. So notice there's a space here between the x-axis and the first curve. So when there's a space, that tells you that your cross-sections are going to be a washer. A washer requires that you define two radii. In this case, we know we need to use the washer because there's a space between the x-axis and region R. So what we do is we take one of those purple cross-sections here, and notice there's two radii. And we're spinning around the x-axis here. So our curve is going to look, or our cross-section, I should say, is going to look something like this. So this is dx because it's a vertical cross-section. And we have a gap here. The gap is this space in here. So this washer is not completely solid. It's kind of ho uh, it's hollowed out in the middle here. So what we need to define is what is our big radius and what is our little radius. So once again, we're still thinking top minus bottom, but the big radius goes from the axis all the way to the end. So you have to think about what is the space between the x-axis, which is also known as y equals 0. So this is the line y equals 0, the x-axis. And this curve is y equals e to the x. And the space between them, I could just do top minus bottom, is going to be e to the x minus 0, or it's just going to be e to the x. 
you might just be able to look at this and say, oh, the distance from the x-axis to the curve is equal to the function. But just in case, you could still use this top minus bottom concept. Now, for the small radius, the little radius, we say the big radius is, let's just make that neater. The big radius goes from here to the center where we're spinning around. And the small radius is this one here from the axis, which is the x-axis, to the first curve we reach, which is y equals e to the negative x. So in this case, the distance between the axis and the orange curve is e to the minus x. But remember, if we only take one cross section, that only gives us one slice of volume, which is going to be pi times big R squared. We could do that on the side, but if I square both sides, e to the x times itself is e to the 2x. So I'd have e to the 2x in here, and now minus little r squared, if we square both sides, e to the minus x times itself is equal to e to the minus 2x. And then we're just multiplying by dx because volume, we need a third dimension. So here, the integral that we're going to set up, we have to think about where does this region start and stop, and everything is going to be in terms of x because we're using functions of x, we're using vertical cross sections here. So our volume is going to be equal to pi times the integral from 0 to 2, and our integrand is e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x dx. Now for part b, this integral, we're writing second, and we have this up arrow here to write our pi, and we've got math 9. That's going to pull up our integral, and our integral was going from x equals 0 up to x equals 2. And on the inside here, we have e to the 2x, and we have, well, once again, just make sure you get out of this exponent, and we've got minus e to the negative 2x. So then the only thing left to do here is just write dx at the end. And pressing enter here, we have our solution to part b. So our answer to this question, if we just record what we found in the calculator, is 82.65 cubic units. Now for question 1c, this question is the trickiest because there's a lot of things we have to be mindful of if we're going to use the washer method to find this volume. So we want to take region R, which is this space in green, and now we're going to rotate it around the y-axis. So we're doing horizontal cross-sections in this case. Now if we look here, when you're going with horizontal cross-sections, everything has to be in terms of y. So if we think about what we said before, y equals e to the x, I would need to take this function and I would need to write it in terms of x equals. So if I take the natural log of both sides, I get natural log of y equals natural log of e to the x, which tells me that x is equal to natural log of y. And if we take the other function, y equals e to the negative x, we could solve this equation for x as well using the same algebra. We're going to do natural log of y equals natural log of e to the minus x. And in this case, we'll get x equals negative natural log y. So this is going to come in handy because we need to be able to define these equations in terms of x. So we have x equals minus natural log y. And for the red curve, we're going to have x equals natural log of y. So we have to think very, very carefully here about what we're setting up. For this specific region, to go through region R, and we're spinning this around the y-axis, notice at this point here, at 0, 1, if I draw a horizontal line through, that the cross sections on the top part are going to go through the red curve and the black line, whereas the cross sections for the bottom portion are going to go through the orange curve and the black line. So anytime that happens where you're going through two different curves, then we're going to need to set up two different integrals. Now, one of the other things that we need to know here when we are looking at this type of cross section to identify the correct limits you have to think about what is the lowest point in region R and what is the highest point in region R. So the lowest point is going to be on the orange curve when x is equal to 2. So if we think about it here, when x equals 2 on the orange curve, we have y equals e to the negative second. So this is the point 2 comma e to the negative 2. And if we think about this part here, on the red curve, this is the highest point. And if we plug x equals 2 into the red function, we would have a y value of e squared. So this would be the point 2 comma e squared. And this is very important because the y values represent our limits for our integrals that we're going to set up in a moment. 
Now, once again, like I was saying before, when we set up our cross sections, notice the cross sections for this part going to the Y axis are, they have a space. So we're going to use a washer and first it meets the red curve and then it meets the vertical line X equals two. So that's going to be very important. So when we set up the cross sections for the top portion here, this is from Y equals one to Y equals E squared. So for the first portion, we're between Y equals one and Y equals E squared. So on this specific interval, we're going to have a big radius here of two units, because if we look, the Y axis is really the line X equals zero. And if we think right minus left, this distance from zero to two, I could just do two minus zero, which is equal to two, which tells us that R squared is going to be equal to four. And if I look at in this specific interval, what is lowercase r? Lowercase r is the distance from the y axis to the red curve. And this distance between x equals zero, and this is where the equation comes in handy, x equals natural log y, would be natural log y minus zero, because this is the curve on the right minus the equation on the left. So we would have the little radius is natural log y. So little r squared would be natural log of y to the second power. So you just have to be very, very careful setting these up because notice here, once again, we have two separate curves defining our horizontal cross sections. And for the bottom portion here, what we're gonna have is we're going to a low value of e to the negative second. So for this specific interval, we're between e to the negative second. So y could be between there and also y could go up to one for this specific interval. And notice here on this interval, the big radius is still going to be equal to two units. If I draw a cross section through this bottom region here, notice the distance between X equals zero and X equals two is constant. That distance is just equal to two. But now lowercase r, our small radius, the distance between X equals zero and this equation is X equals minus natural log Y would be minus natural log Y minus zero, which is just minus natural log y. So if we go ahead and use the formula for this, we would need to set up r squared, which is equal to four, and lowercase r squared is minus natural log of y to the second, which I could just say is natural log of y to the second power, because when I square this negative term, it's going to become positive anyway. So now for the final step is we need to set up the integral, and notice the way that I have this set up, we have the limits already defined here. So for this first portion here, call this like for volume one, for the first portion of the volume, we're looking at the integral from one to e squared, and we have pi times the big radius squared is four minus natural log of y to the second power, and we have dy. And now plus for the next interval here, we're between, so we have a pi and we're going from e to the negative second up to one, that's our smallest value and our biggest value, and we have big R squared, which is four, minus little r squared, which is natural log of y to the second power dy like this. Okay, for this last question here, we have the most to type in, so let's make sure we're careful. The first integral we have is we have pi, and we're writing in math nine, and we could take care of the integral going from one to e squared. And our integrand here, we're going to have two to the second power, which is just four, minus, and we've got natural log of y squared. We don't have to use the letter y, but if you want to, you just press alpha one, and that'll pull up the value or the letter for y. And we're squaring this, and then we have d, dy at the end, if we're gonna make this in terms of y. And now we have plus, and the next integral also has a pi in front. And now we've got math nine, bringing up our next integral, and this one is going from e to the negative second, all the way up to one. And this time around, we're actually gonna have matching integrands. We have four minus, and I could write negative natural log y, but when I square it, it's just gonna become natural log of y all to the second power. So I have natural log of y, and I close the parentheses around the natural log and square it, and then this is gonna end in dy. And after typing all of this in, we have our solution to part C. We have 48.998 if we round to the nearest thousands, please. 
For this question here, we're going to start the same way by sketching our curve on this axis over here. So if we look, we're looking at the hyperbola x squared minus y squared equals 9, which is going to start over here at 3, 0, and it's going to open outwards like this. And if we look on this portion here for the left side of the graph, it's starting at negative 3, 0, and it's going to open outwards in this direction here. But for this specific question, we're looking at the region. For one, we're in the first quadrant, so we're only considering the top portion of the graph. And we're between the x-axis and the line x equals 5. So what we should do is just sketch these lines in. So we have the x-axis and the line x equals 5 is this vertical line here. But remember, we're only looking at quadrant 1. So that means that we're only looking at the top half here. And this is our region R. So for the first part of this question, what we want to do is find the area of region R. And notice the limits. This thing goes from x equals 3 to x equals 5. So ultimately, when we set up our integral, the integral is going to go from 3 to 5. And then we just have to worry about setting up our integrand. Now, for the integrand portion, we have to think about cross sections for area are rectangles. So if we look, any one of these rectangles in region R is going to have a width of dx. And the height is going to be the distance between the x-axis and this curve here, which is going to be in terms of y because it's a vertical cross-section. So what we should do is we should take this equation and solve it for y. And if we rearrange the terms here, we'll get y squared equals x squared minus 9. And then when we take the square root of both sides, we've got plus or minus square root x squared minus 9. But since we're dealing with just the top portion of the curve, not the bottom, the top portion is going to be y equals square root x squared minus 9. And the bottom portion would be the y equals negative square root x squared minus 9. So in this case here, we're going to use the top part. And that's going to give us x squared minus 9 over here. So when we want to find the area of region R, these are our limits. This is where we're starting and stopping. But our integrand is just going to be x squared minus 9 dx. For question 2a, we have the integral, so math 9, and we're going from x equals 3 up to x equals 5. And our integrand here is just square root x squared minus 9. And we write dx at the end. And this will give us our answer to part a. So now we just record our answer. And our answer here is going to be 5.056 when we round to the nearest thousands place. Now, for the next part of this question, we're going to take region R and we're going to spin it about the x-axis. But one thing to be careful of here, this is the method for the washer. But notice we only use the washer when there's a space between the axis that you're spinning around and the region that you're actually going to be spinning. But notice here that there is no gap or no space between the x-axis and the region R that we're spinning around the x-axis. So in this case, we're not actually going to be using the washer. We're going to be using the disk as our cross section. So the idea is we're taking any one of these vertical cross sections here. And we're going to spin them about the x-axis. And when we do this, notice we're going to get a solid disk here. There's not going to be any space. So we're only going to have one radius. And the radius that we're going to have is going to be defined by this y distance here, which we said before was square root of x squared minus 9. And notice for the equation for the volume of a washer, I'm sorry, for the volume of a disk, it's just going to be pi r squared times dx. So it's the area of the base of this solid times dx. And the area, since it's a circle, is going to be pi r squared, and we have dx. But r squared, if we do that here, is just going to be x squared minus 9. So here, remember, this is just the volume of one slice, but we want to find the volume of the entire solid that we're generating here. So we're going to do the volume is equal to pi times the integral from this region starts at x equals 3 and stops at x equals 5. And we've got pi times r squared, which is x squared minus 9 dx. So for the next question here, if we want to write our answer in fraction form, then we could leave out the pi for now, because pi is going to make our answer come out irrational. And we're looking at the integral from 3 to 5 of just x squared minus 9, because we're squaring our radius this time. And if we look at this specific answer, 
and we press math enter enter to convert this to a fraction this tells us that our answer to the question is going to be 44 pi over 3 but if you wanted to get the full decimal answer here then you could just take this specific answer here and multiply it by pi and if you want your answer not in fraction form but to the nearest thousands place then we would have 46.077 so we're going to have 44 pi over three that's our solution to this example here okay for this last question here now what we want to do is we want to revolve region r about the line x equals negative one and be mindful this is a vertical line x equals negative one so we're going to be using horizontal cross sections and in this case we're going to have a washer because there is a space between this vertical line x equals negative one which is our axis and this region r here that if we were to draw a horizontal cross section all the way through notice there's a space from here to here and because there is a space that means we're going to need two radii when we're setting up our integral so to find the distance between this vertical line x equals negative one and this vertical line x equals five you could just look at it or use this concept of right minus left remember no matter where i draw my horizontal cross section let's say i drew it way up here or you know what, i'll make it a little bit a little bit lower so it stands out more because this will be more obvious but see if i draw it from here to here notice the length of the big radius doesn't change because it's between two vertical lines so the big radius is going to start out at x equals 5 minus x equals negative 1 remember do, we're doing the equation on the right minus the equation on the left and 5 minus negative 1 works out to 6. if you could just do that step in your head that's great but this is a concept that'll help you through a lot of these questions for horizontal cross sections now for lowercase r this one there's a little bit more work involved and what we have to do is everything has to be in terms of y the integrand and the limits have to be in terms of y so what we should do is we should solve this equation to say x equals and then have some expression with y on the other side so we're going to take x squared minus y squared equals 9 and we're going to move the y squared over and then if we take the square root of this that tells us that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y squared plus 9 but if you think about this the top part of the curve here is going to be the plus square root because it's above the x-axis so this is the x equals positive square root and we have y squared let's just make this a little bit neater so we have x equals square root of y squared plus 9 and on bottom this would be the y equals minus square root x squared plus 9 but we only need the top portion so the radius in this case if we think about it very carefully is the distance between the red curve the x equals square root y squared plus 9 and the line x equals negative 1. so we're going to do the equation on the right which is square root y squared plus 9 minus the equation on the left is x equals negative 1 which tells us our small radius is just y squared plus 9 and then we have plus 1 at the end so now to set up our integral we just have to think about what is the lowest point and the highest point on our curve here so if you think about this very carefully when x is equal to 5 what is y equal to so at this point here if we think about what is the highest point on this region r is going to occur when x is equal to 5. so if we were to plug in 5 to this equation we would have 5 squared minus y squared is equal to 9 which is going to if we rearrange this give us 16 is equal to y squared which should make it obvious for the top part of the graph this is going to give us y equals 4. so our coordinate would be 5 comma 4 and this is going to tell us what our upper limit is the lowest y value occurs down here at y equals 0. so now when we want to set up our integral for the volume of this region the volume is going to be equal to pi the limits are 0 and 4 and we have the big radius squared is 6 squared which is just 36 but we'll write it out and we have minus little r squared is going to be y squared plus 9 and then outside of the square root we have a plus 1 and this whole uh, this whole quantity is being squared and then this integral should end in dy because these are horizontal cross sections now for this last question here we have a lot to write in we have pi 
and now we write math 9 to pull up our integral. We're going from y equals 0 up to y equals 4. And our integrand, when we type it in, is going to be 6 squared, which we could just write 36. And we've got minus, and in parentheses here, we have square root of y squared plus 9. So we have alpha 1 for y, and we're writing in y squared plus 9. And then outside of the square root, we have an extra plus 1. And then we close the parentheses around this, because that's our little radius, and we're squaring the whole thing. And then we just have to write our dy at the end, and we should have our answer to the last part here. Our answer to the nearest thousands place is 165.811. Our answer to this last part here is going to be equal to 165.811 cubic units. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on applications of integration. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.